Hey everybody, we're going to do a video and review on the Shore Track trailer I picked up a couple weeks ago. I went back, originally when I bought the 6x10 Griffin, I was there looking for a uh, 5x10. I wanted something low that I could reach over and work out of. When I do carpentry stuff, I wanted something to have lumber in. My dump truck's high off the ground, so I use that. I pretty much use that as a dump truck. If that's on the road, it's hauling dirt or whatever. I don't even haul my trailers with it because it puts me over with a CDO. My four-door pickup's only got a six-foot bed, so it's kind of useless, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I've been looking to get a trailer. I got rid of a couple, uh, actually three trailers this spring. Replaced it with the Griffin. And what happened a few weeks ago is... Uh, one of the guys that looked at one of the trailers I had for sale, I told him I might be selling that 16 foot uh, load trail. One of his buddies come over and didn't even try to like dicker with me on the price. I said, I got I want this much. Pretty much I made a little bit of money on it from what I paid for it two years ago. So I used it for two seasons um, and made a few hundred dollars selling it. So he came over and it was exactly what he was looking for. He wanted something big enough to put his he has a 25 horse coyote tractor with a grapple on the front. He does a lot of brush removal and stuff like that. He's a retired guy, but he wanted the 16 foot long. His tractor will fit in that with the grapple bucket and a York rake on the back. Plenty of points. In it. So if you fell in love with it when you see it, any short, make a short story. He ended up buying that, which gave me some money to go get another small trailer. And I'm going to say in this video, I, I I was a load trail fan for a long time. I think they've just priced themselves out of the market for me. Uh, you're buying trailers, Shore Track's not a bad name. Griffin was a name I never really paid too much attention to. Um, I actually went there that day to buy another trailer and I liked the Griffin better. Uh, I ended up with a 10,000 pound trailer for about the same price as a, the other brand I was looking at to get a 7,000. And I went there to get a 10 foot trailer. They ended up making me a deal because they didn't have no 10s in the Griffin, but they gave me that 12 at a pretty good discount. Uh, and I'm super happy with the Griffin I bought. Um, so I went to buy another Griffin. I wanted to get a five by 10 Griffin that was lower sided. I went there that day and they didn't have any. Even though they're online, it said they did. I quickly called a couple days before that. Oh yeah, we have a few left. So I, I headed over, we get over there, didn't have any. So the, the salesman over there, uh, I guess they're short on help right now, like everybody. So I ended up dealing with one of the, I guess he's the manager of the whole place, came down. Because um, the guy said, hey, this guy just bought a trailer from us a few weeks ago. You might want to come down and deal with him. So he came down and he goes, well, is there a reason you don't want a short track? And I'm like, oh, I, I said, I've, again, I've seen short track out there. I actually had a buddy that had a short track open pit car trailer years ago. And I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word it was junk, but it was built very light. But again, that was the cheapest thing he could buy at the time. And he got, he kept it seven years and never had anything break or welds come undone. Um, I was just, and the idea behind that sometimes is with the 7,000 pound car trailers, they make them light open pit to lighten it so you can haul a decent sized car on it. You'll learn that in my videos with trailers. You gotta be careful how heavy a trailer is built because it takes away from what you can haul in it or on it. Again, I, I just, I never looked at Sure Track, basically. I, like I didn't even give him the time of day when I, I walked by him over there. So finally he, he brought me out. Uh, I will say this, that manager came out and took a good 25 minutes to a half hour with me walking around and he put these up and showed me. There was still some 12 foot Griffins there so he showed me. Again, I'm not going to say nothing bad about Griffin, but he did show me the Griffin. This was $930 more than a Griffin in the same size if they had it. But he went out and showed me the difference. And again, I like my Griffin. I'm, I, I don't think it's, I've used it a lot since I bought it. And I'm, I'm very impressed. What I'm going to do with it, I'm not going to beat it up. Most time a dump trailer gets a bad name, it's because someone's overloading it all the time and they rack and they'll start coming unwelded. And I buy, I bought the last, these last two trailers I bought were for light duty use. It's, uh, like I said, I wanted something that I could easily reach in the side. Um, and that, I've used this two or three on two jobs and I used it for some personal stuff. I had to go get lumber. Um, it's going to be awesome for stuff like that. 
But what he showed me is basically on the Griffin, uh, he put up, dumped up two of them, and the welds were different. So basically what I'm going to show you is what he showed me. You look at this shore track, and there's a weld, I'm going to say seven inches away, there's another weld seven inches away, and this is pretty much done all the way down through. When he showed me some of the other brands, and they sell them, and that's what he said. He goes, I'm just showing you, and I say this in my videos all the time, there's always a reason something's cheaper. Um, the the thing I didn't like about this, but the, the Griffin in this size would have been the same way as a single piston. Um, but it's a good size cylinder, and I also like the way they mounted it. Uh, a lot of trailers are just mounted to one piece here. They doubled up, welded it, makes a nice rugged, you know, um, kind of gave it a gusset. So it has more um that's plenty like i said this is a seven thousand pound trailer so it's not like you're going to be uh getting crazy with it anyways but i just want to show after he showed me this i'm kind of impressed with it um and for what i'm going to do with it i think it's going to be an awesome little trailer everything they do is like this this was heavier this little catch to keep the body squared up if you get down in a rough road this thing short track should do better i mean they weld those uh, diamond plate, which these are heavy. You can tell by banging on them. But in between the welds, they use this silicone, and it didn't even come close to sealing that, so I'm going to take the time. Um, I cleaned it up one day and was going to do it, then I used it again. So i got to clean it again because it's just, uh, we got rain today, but it's been dry, so this thing's just dusty. But I'm going to take the time and reseal those so that they're actually sealed and doesn't start rusting. Uh, that was one thing I caught on it that I think if sure tracks watching they might want to whoever goes out in the Sales yard Either that I have their dealers, you know clean them up before they sell them All my trailers you'll know even when they get older they look good. I try to keep the paint touched up I'm gonna take this one in and do the brake drums because I notice they're already a little rusty You'll see you know stuff like uh, this That drives me nuts I'm, I'm just going to take the time to clean it up, paint it, so I, I want this thing to look good for quite a while. The paint on this seems pretty good. Uh, it's powder coated. I'm not a big fan of powder coat, but that's what pretty much everybody's going to. Got the stake pockets in it, so if you do want to put sides. I'm not, because of what I want to do with this. Um, what I'm using it for is light duty. If I got to bring a couple trees somewhere and plant them or something like that, or bark mulch. This is also going to be good for if someone wants like two yards. Most of my deliveries are two yards of any product I sell. Uh, Bach mulch stone. I did haul uh, some Bach mulch and stuff on this already. I like how it fits in places uh, compared to that 16 footer. And I kept my 14 foot load trail. There is something I use a lot in the spring because that's how I get, will get all my Bach mulch. I get it 15 to 17 yards at a time. So I did put the top system on myself, which the top kit was... Uh, I think 300, uh, 285 bucks, and then I just used a piece of rod and, you know, capped them. Uh, the kit doesn't come with that rod, which I think is stupid. They should give you that piece of uh, rod to put in there. The one thing I think, like they make it so that it catches here. This is all from the factory. There should be one on the back, but I think they design it so you can just use a bungee cord. But I, I'm gonna come up with a hook system back there. But I thought I'd show this. Um, I've used it a couple times. It seems to go down the road straight. Uh, hauls nice. Doesn't bounce around or jump around. You hear those stories sometimes how that someone will, they'll weld them so quick the axles are crooked and your wear ties, but this seems to track good. I'm doing this review right now. Like I said, I've only used it a few times. If it gives me issues, you'll see more reviews on it. I don't think that's going to be the case. The Griffin's right behind me. And uh, so far, I'm loving that. Uh, I just like what i can't the biggest thing i'm finding that i like is these a that one is a six wide this one's a five wide five by ten this is a six by twelve all my other trailers i've always gone i've all but i had one seven thousand pound little dump uh that i got rid of but m all my bigger trailers have always been basically the the eight by whatever and the the axles are actually a stick the tire and rim sticks out a little bit better than eight feet which i i always thought the law was eight feet but i can tell you right now that i've had trailers that are a little bit wider probably by two inches than the eight feet but you're hauling that in tight areas 
you've got to be careful. And I go on all these camp roads and all these tree huggers, they, if you hit a tree, they get upset. And that sometimes it's hard to, this is hooked to a four door F350 and you're trying to w wiggle down through someone's driveway. Um, I'm finding that six wide is real nice. And I, I won't lie to you, I have hauled somewhat heavy loads on this. Two days after I bought it, I was on a job where I had to, I had to come home with boulders that I was taking out. And uh, it's a mixture of boulders and bark mulch. I was basically taking out gardens and I was on the way back, I was hauling three quarter stone, an inch and a half stone. And this is a 10,000 pound and it, it seemed to, I was probably putting three yards in it. I, like I said, I won't go crazy, but it was very comfortable doing it. I was, I had to take the highway back to the place. So I was trucking right down the road with it. It seems to pull straight. Um, just saying, I have nothing bad to say about that. I probably would have bought a Griffin if it was there. And then I won't lie to you, this one here is a little bit more money. I do think I'm going to like it. I do think the sides are made a little bit better than the Griffin would have been if they had one in stock. I also like how this has got the uh, D-rings in it. And they put plenty. They put one in the front. So if you would have went something on. I find once in a while I'll put my my walk behind stump grinder on and it's nice to have that center point to I, I can normally take that center point and the two in the back and and tie that down fairly quick so it ain't moving around but I think this is going to work out good another thing trailers in this price point a lot of them only had the one-way gate uh that oh that flips open and very flimsy um I really wanted the bond door style so, so far I'm liking it. Like I said, the lighting seems to be decent. They run the wiring a little bit better than I think the Griffin does. And everybody will say, oh, what's, what a big, what, that ain't a big deal. It, it really is a big deal because I've had trailers where you get, some of the places I go into is rough terrain. You hook a wire and yank your whole wiring system out. Kind of a pain in the butt. These will run through the frame as much as they can, which protects it. The hinge point on this I'm pretty impressed with. Again, they had other brands there I was looking at. This this place keeps a lot of different companies' uh, products there. And overall, for the price point I paid for this, I think this was the best bang for the buck the day I went there. I did get it without a spare tire because I had this spare tire off another trailer. Um, my other dump was the same bolt pattern. And I had a couple spares for it. That's the only thing with me. I try to keep spare tires around. So, uh, and it's a funny thing because... It, Oh, you pull up out of someone's yard most of the time what takes out one of these tires is you you get to an edge of the road or a driveway and you get a sharp rock and it takes a tire out i've always tried to keep extra rims and tires at home <laughs> uh, i always keep one on it but there's a lot of times you pop two tires not one <laughs> uh the box that everything's in is pretty decent i mean it's not heavy heavy duty but i mean it served its purpose I don't really mind the prop rod neither because the, the hydraulic cylinders in those the first time you open and close that on a real cold day it normally takes that cheap cylinder out but like i said this is a seven thousand pound trailer sure track five by ten so i thought i would do the review on it and if the next we i'll do another review in like a year tell you what i think of it i actually do have a lot of use for it this year i'm i'm just finding these are the, the easy to use and i really like this one so far because i can reach right into it with no issues so i've actually got a even though i'm a landscape company i do a lot of carpentry stuff like small decks and steps and my attitude is when i'm on a job site i try to extract all the money i can extract if it's something i'm capable of doing You'll see the 20-day plate still on there, so um, this is still fairly new to me. But overall, I figured I'd say something. Uh, sure Tracks, first one I've owned. We'll see how it goes, but it's looking pretty good quality. I'm really impressed with the way the welds are done. Uh, there was a couple other brands there that were... Uh, you had a couple there that I think was 1600 bucks less than this. But you start looking at how things were welded. I mean, that's a nice clean weld. Um, not docked it up at all Nice clean weld you look at some of them and it's like I, I'm going to use the term bubble gum because that's what weld is used But it was like bubble gum welded Really questions, but you look All the hanger points of this are pretty clean even where they welded the Fenders on it's pretty clean. The only downfall I can see is that caulking. I'm going to redo uh, Another thing of sure tracks watching these hinge points um, 
them grease fittings didn't take grease. Whoever did that just put a glob of grease to say they did it, but these open hot as hell. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta look into that and see why that didn't take grease. But I don't really care because it's it's another point that ain't gonna rattle real quick. But uh, them doors open hard. <laughs> I don't know if that, I got to look, there might be a Teflon bushing in there that's causing it, but there's a grease fitting on it for a re so I'm going to guess that's just a bolt. Um, but it's probably tight enough so that it didn't take grease, but again, whoever went out and did that before they shipped this, uh, should be looking for a job. If it didn't take grease, they should have looked in the find. You're going to find every one of these that was sitting there has the same problem. And I always say that, I don't care what I buy, if there's a good thing I'm going to say, a good thing about it, if there's a bad thing I'm going to show, so quality control someone should really that's a joke someone ran that bead and didn't, it didn't even touch the fender it just stuck to the box itself so like i said you're going to see me do all the reviews people are uh, actually contacting me wanting me to do reviews on other tools uh all my dump trailers again i'm going to do another one on this probably next season and if i'm whatever i'm having for issues if i am i'm going to say uh i want to try to deter people from buying crap you know what i mean i i I bought a couple tools the last five years that I wouldn't have bought if people would have done honest reviews on them. <laughs> uh, I will say there's brands out there that are letting YouTubers take the stuff for free and use it for two years. So they, they and I believe they say they're not, but I believe they're told they can't talk bad about it. I don't care what gets get something gets given to me someday. I'm going to be honest about it. I also want to show that dumped up all the way. That dumps up definitely high enough to dump out whatever's in it, even if it's like wet loom or something like that. Um, my daughter was with me on a job site that we used it on and I think she's the one that commented on how high it dumped up and that it just came to me I wanted to say that because there was another brand there that I ran I ran the cylinder up and it probably didn't even come within two feet of what this one does and I there are trailers out there that they throw them together and they, they don't care about stuff like that they just want to put something out there to compete with everybody it's normally cheaper but then you look at it um, but I have seen some of the big box stores now are keeping these small dump trailers But you get looking at them and it's scary how poorly they're built um, This one seems to be like I said, I want to show Everything seems to be pretty good quality that they use the axles are real clean um, Some of the other brands I was looking at it looks like the axles were sitting outside for a year. They were rusty Bolted them together. They anodized u-bolts to bolt things together the bolts that bolted the springs stuff together. Them are uh, anodized, those brackets are galvanized. So they're taking a little bit of time. And like I said, you look at the wiring, they use plug-in type wiring, which is pretty impressive. They run it through the frame everywhere they can. So I'll give them credit, you know, for stuff they do that's right. The hinge point, like I said on this, is very impressive. Uh, believe it or not, that plate isn't the thickest plate, but it's thicker than some of the other stuff I was looking at. I'm seeing little things I'm catching, like if you look right there, you know, say I'm a whiner about it, but like I don't think this trailer should have rust on it, you know, two weeks after they delivered it to me. But I, it's just uh, quality control, someone should catch that. Um, and again, I think if you're not going to weld the thing all the way across, you should probably run a bead of caulking of some sort. Um, all the urethane caulkings they have now, uh, and I think I'm going to take the time and do that. Cause I'm hoping to not have to paint this. I'll, I'll touch up the paint now and then I hope I don't have to touch it again for four or five years. Fenders were the same way. I had some rub marks probably where they stack other ones to haul them. But that's all stuff. They give, give the dealers a can of paint so that they can have their lock kid go out and touch that up. So sure tracks watching. There's little things they could sharpen the pen, you know, sharpen up on. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. Like I said, the, the uh, quality of the welds, overall the paintwork is definitely better than other ones I was looking at. Um, again, I like how this has got uh, power up, power down. That's something there are, there's still a handful of trailers out there that are gravity down, which to me is dangerous. But all the stupid crap our government does in this country and they allow stuff like that to still go on is beyond me. I just want to show it working in this video since I'm uh, doing a review on it. So far, um, I've hauled lumber on it a couple times. 
and just some stuff I dug off a job site but I figured I'd show it dumping this is a pretty good load this is way more than I would ever put on it normally but just for video purposes I just want to show that tips up high enough to dump anything out. Um, nothing gets stuck in it too bad. You always get stuff that sticks around those D-rings. Um, but they're even worse when they're welded to the floor. Uh, and believe it or not, a lot of companies weld them to the floor. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but I just thought I'd show that working. And... It seems to be, uh, it doesn't seem to get bothered by that weight. And that's the most weight I'm ever gonna put in it, so. I'll never haul that over the road. Uh, like I said, I bought this for light duty use. Um, I'm not saying once in a while you might push it a little bit. If you're finishing up on a job site and you don't wanna go back and grab another load, you might push it. Um, but that's a pretty healthy load for a 7,000 pound trailer. So again, part of my channel is gonna be doing the reviews on stuff I buy. And like I said, if I have a lot of issues with this, you'll see another review on it. Any issues or things I find that I like afterwards, I'll say one way or the other. Uh, but again, I'm going to say if you like my content, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.